In this video, we will see about the different types of speed control for DC motor. If we take a DC motor, the relation between speed and voltage is that speed of the motor is directly proportional to the voltage and inversely proportional to the flux. From this, we can say that there are two variables that are controlling the speed of the DC motor. So, you have two different techniques. One is called armature or rheostatic control or you can say by varying the voltage, we can vary the speed of the motor. Another one is the flux control or field control where you will control this flux and change the speed of the motor. So, let us see about these two speed control techniques for both shunt motor as well as series motor. First, let us take shunt motor. So, shunt motor we know the field winding will be in parallel to the armature. So, shunt motor is a constant speed motor and we have this characteristics between speed and armature current as this one. Okay. So, if you do not know how you are getting this one, just refer to the characteristics of the DC motor previous video. First, we will see about the armature or rheostatic control method. So, we know N is directly proportional to V and inversely proportional to flux. So, this is a shunt motor. The flux will remain constant. So, we can write N is directly proportional to V. So, we have to vary the voltage applied to the armature so that the speed will change. You see the diagram here. This is the applied voltage, right? The total uh, or the supply voltage. This remains constant. What we are doing is we are connecting a resistance in series with the armature. And if you increase the drop here, the voltage applied to the armature will reduce. This voltage is fixed. Only the drop we are able to change. So, in this method, we can only reduce the voltage applied to the armature. We cannot increase the voltage applied to the armature. So, in this method, we can achieve speed control below rated speed only. Okay, Because fixed supply voltage is there, we are able to change this resistance and reduce the voltage to the armature. So, you can achieve only speed control below rated speed. So, without resistance, that is without this uh, rheostat, you, you are getting a characteristics like this. So, when you add a resistance, your characteristics will be like this because of the drop in resistance. So, for problem, you may need to know these formulas. So, N1, if it is directly proportional to EB1, then N2 will be directly proportional to the back EMF2. So, you can just uh, divide these two, you will get a relation. So, these type of small relations will be used to solve many numericals in machines. If we see the limitations of this method, so you can itself directly tell we have a resistor and we are dropping the voltage here. So, it is an inefficient method. And another thing you can achieve only speed control below rated speed. Next you have flux control method. So, again same formula N is directly proportional to V by phi. But, um, we are changing the flux here. So, it is flux control method. So, we are changing the flux. So, how to change this flux? You put a resistor in series with the field winding. So, the field current will change. It means that flux can be changed. So, as flux decreases, speed will increase. Here also, you have to note 
a resistor is connected in series with the winding the total applied voltage remains the same so you can only reduce the flux here so field current is reduced here so speed if field is reduced speed will increase so you can achieve speed control only above rated speed if you see the advantages of flux control method the field current will be small so the i square rf uh, this losses will be small and you can achieve speed control above rated speed disadvantage is that you cannot get speed control below rated speed and another thing is that at high speeds because we are reducing the flux and increasing the speed so at high speed you may get commutation problem next we will see about speed control of dc series motor there is a um, difference between shunt motor and series motor because in shunt motor field is in parallel so you can separately control it but in case of a series motor the field winding is in series with the armature so whatever you do to the field it will affect the armature as well as whatever you do to the armature it is going to affect the field and in series motor flux is directly proportional to field current or armature current because both are same same current flows through the field winding as well as armature so the speed control of series motor is slightly different from shunt motor so the first method is connecting a variable resistance in series with the armature so the field winding or armature in series and you are connecting a rheostat in series with the armature so by varying this rheostat you are actually reducing the voltage applied to the armature so thereby we are able to reduce the speed but the problem with this method is that all the current that is the armature current fully passes through the rheostat so drop will be more and it leads to more losses so this is the speed current characteristics without resistance and when you connect a resistance it again drops next you have the field control method or flux control method there are different techniques to control the flux in a series motor the first one is the field diverter where a resistance is connected in parallel with the field winding so in this case what happens the total current gets divided into two parts so based on the resistance value a part of the current will flow through the resistor so that the field current is reduced so if the field current is reduced the speed is increased next method is armature diverter here a resistance is connected in parallel with the armature so what happens the armature current get reduced but in constant torque applications to meet the load demand from the source more current is drawn so the field current will increase so as a field current increases speed is decreased in this case next another method is called tapped field control method so this is like our um, auto transformer so you have tappings here and you can uh, connect whatever field winding you want so depending upon that your uh, field current will vary so that the speed will also change so when you have full field it means that more flux is there the speed will be minimum so this type of field control will be used in electric traction next we have paralleling field coil that is you can connect two or three coils in series and some of them in parallel so by using this you are able to divide the current through this and the speed can be increased in steps so this type of paralleling uh, field coils is used for
fan motors so far we have seen speed control of uh, dc motors so th there are basically two types one is armature or rheostatic control which is used to control the speed below the rated speed and in flux control we are able to achieve speed control above rated speed but if you want both uh, that is uh, if you want to control the speed below rated speed as well as above rated speed there is one more technique called watt leonard method so here you are able to achieve both below and above rated speed control so this is um, the watt leonard method so here it looks bit complicated but it is very easy this was used in earlier days that is before the invention of power electronic devices that is this motor you see here this is the motor whose speed we want to control it okay so what are the two techniques one is armature voltage control for below base speed and another one is field control for above base speed so by varying the field you can uh, control the speed of this motor above rated speed so that is not a problem for below rated speed what we will do is we will put a resistor and control the voltage applied to the motor so here instead of a resistor we have a generator which will supply the required voltage to this motor so instead of a rheostat this generator is doing the function of providing the supply voltage for the motor so if i control the generator output voltage i can control the voltage applied to the motor so this is a generator generator needs mechanical input and it gives electrical output so how to give the mechanical input for the generator a induction motor can be used as a prime mover which gives the mechanical input for this generator so by controlling this generator you are able to control the voltage applied to the motor so this is generator field winding this is motor field winding so for speed control below base speed you have to control the field current of the dc generator for above base speed field current of the dc motor can be varied so there are some advantage as well as disadvantages of this method first thing by changing the field uh, field winding of the dc generator you can easily achieve forward and reverse speed and wide range of speed control is possible with this method but disadvantages are they have high initial cost because we want to control the speed of one motor for that you need two more motors and that will increase the total cost and each motor at every stage there will be losses so efficiency will be lower and this arrangement as you see it will be requiring more space and all the three motors will give you noise and it needs frequent maintenance okay so due to the invention of power electronics nowadays power electronic fed converters are able to achieve speed control easily the other thing which you should know about dc motor is that they use starters for starting the dc motor so you might have seen this type of starters in labs where you will start the motor while starting the motor you will push the knob from one position to the other after some time it will automatically come to this position so what is that so what happens is that when the machine is at rest when it is not running the back emf will be zero so when the back emf is zero 
and you are applying the full voltage across the armature the starting current will be very high because ia is v minus eb by ra at rest eb is zero so here it is zero so ia will be v by ra ra is a very small value so this will be a very high value so to limit this uh, starting current we have to add a resistance in series with the armature so uh, once the motor starts uh, building up the uh, building up the back emf so if it increases this current will reduce at that time you can remove the external resistance completely so that is why starters are used in dc motor so the points to remember here are the speed is directly proportional to voltage and inversely proportional to flux based on this there are two techniques armature or rheostatic control so here you are able to control the speed below base speed or rated speed in flux control method you are reducing the flux the speed will increase so the speed above rated speed can be controlled and there is another method what leonard method where speed control above and below base speed can be possible and the starters are used for starting dc motors to limit the initial starting current if you like the video do subscribe to read electric vehicle thank you